did you wonder why your drone data doesn't match up with your expectations? I will reveal the top mistakes in drone data post-processing and how to fix them. Last one, it's probably a mistake that you're not even aware of and I will explain it very detailed and probably you don't want to miss it. First one is, if you use a drone equipped with a RTK GPS receiver, you don't need ground control points or checkpoints. This affirmation is quite wrong and I met a fair amount of drone pilots and enthusiasts having this impression. As an experienced land survey, I know that redundancy points and check shots are the key for sleeping well at night and you will know that your client will not come back in a year or two years time after he designed his house estate and his roads, contracted a construction company, a surveyor, made the checks and realized that the whole site design is in the wrong location. Even if you are using a drone equipped with RTK, you still need the ground control points and checkpoints in case you will fly in an area without mobile signal or your GPS receiver uh, loses connection to your uh, base in the middle of the flight or you just are in the area with bad GNSS signal. In this case, you still need ground control points to correct the data and hopefully you will not need to go back on site to redo the survey. This will lead us to the second mistake. The number of ground control points required for an accurate aerial map can vary, but most specialists suggest that placing more than five to 10 uh, ground control points may not improve returns in the term of accuracy. This case that while the ground control points are crucially for accuracy, overuse behind a certain number does not proportionally improve the map's precision. In terms of positioning, ground control points should ideally cover different elevation across the survey area and be placed in locations that are easily distinguishable to avoid ambiguity. While the process of placing ground control points can be time consuming, is less awkward and less expensive than having to refly a project due to inaccuracies. RTK and PPK drones can significantly reduce the need for ground control points by providing high accuracy positioning data. RTK drones offer real-time correction to the drone's GPS positioning, while the PPK drones attach geo coordinates to each image after the flight using the data from both the drone and the base station for more accurate positioning. However, uh, ground control points can still play a crucial role in improving the accuracy of non-RTK dr drone flights or in the scenario where uh, RTK or PPK data might be compromised due to uh, obstruction or signal interruptions. By the way guys, if you like this content, please subscribe. That will help me a lot. Poor fire planning in drone mapping can lead to several significant issues that can impact the quality and accuracy of your survey data. One of the primary consequences is the missed area during the data collection, where parts of the intended survey area are not captured, leaving gaps in the data. This can result in an incomplete representation of the survey area, necessitating additional flights that consume more time and money. Another consequence is insufficient data collection. Without meticulous planning, the drone may not capture data at the required resolution or density for accurate mapping, affecting the quality of the final output. This is particularly problematic in complex environments or projects require high precision, such as construction planning or environmental monitoring. To ensure comprehensive coverage and data redundancy, plan for significant overlap in your images both front lap and side lap. Most mapping software recommend at least 70-75% overlap to ensure quality data collection. Mapping areas with high vegetations present unique challenges for drone surveyors and mapping professionals. Dense foliage and tree canopies can significantly impact the accuracy and quality of the data collected, leading to potential errors in the final mapping outputs. Understanding these challenges is crucial to ensuring the effectiveness 
of your drone mapping missions in vegetated areas. Dense vegetation can block the drone sensor from capturing the ground surface accurately, leading to gaps and or the inaccuracy in the data. This is particularly problematic for projects requiring detailed uh, topographical maps and soil analyzing. Imagine you are surveying an area where the grass is high, it is very likely that your surface model will be represented by the top of the grass. You can get better results by using uh, LiDAR technology. LiDAR can penetrate uh, vegetation to some extent, capturing the ground surface beneath the canopy more accurate than the photogrammetry alone. Another method to improve your accuracy is by using post-processing software capable of filtering out vegetation and focusing on the ground data. Techniques such as uh, digital surface model DSM to digital terrain model DTM conversion can be particularly useful. But the best method to be sure of the quality of your survey is to supplement your drone data with ground-based surveys in highly vegetated areas. This can help validate the accuracy of your drone mapping and identify any discrepancies caused by vegetation. This is a long explanation, but I promise you that it will be worth it and it will make you be more careful when you will process your drone data or your GPS data in general. Unless you are part of a certain organization, you probably heard that the Earth is not flat. In fact, it's not round either and it has an irregular surface. The specialists in geodesy and cartography found that the surface that represents the best shape of the Earth is a geoid. A geoid fits the average surface of Earth portions and the Earth gravity field. Because there was a need to calculate coordinates on different points of the Earth's surface, there was a need for a mathematical figure that approximates the Earth's uh, form, the best shape found was a spheroid or an ellipsoid which is a sphere flattened on the poles. In the late 1950s, the United States Department of Defense together with the scientists of other institutions and countries began to develop a world system to which the geodetic data could be referred and compatibility established between the coordinates of widely separate sites of interest. The term datum as used here refers to a smooth surface somehow arbitrarily defined as zero elevation consistent with a set of uh, surveyors measurement of distances between various stations and differences in elevation or reduced to a grid of latitude, uh, longitude and elevations. This model has been updated since and the last version is the WGS84 adopted in 1984 but updated uh, a few times since. Imagine that this datum is a compromise that best represents the whole Earth but can have big errors in some parts of the planet. That requires for each country to adopt a datum that will represent the best their interest. There are hundreds of horizontal uh, datums around the world, usually referred to some convenient local reference point. Geographic coordinates, latitude and longitude are difficult to use analytically. So cartographers project the ellipsoid out to different surfaces to provide flat maps. In a map projection, coordinates often uh, express as uh, latitude and longitude of uh, location from the surface of the globe are transformed to coordinates on a plane. Projection is a necessary step in the creation of a two-dimensional map and is one of the essential elements of cartography. All projection of a sphere on a plane necessarily distort the surface in some way and to some extent. Depending on the purpose of the map, some distortions are acceptable and others are not. Now coming back to our drone data and why I wanted to give you all this information. Our drones usually use WGS84 coordinates to geotag the photos so these coordinates usually need to be transformed finally in national grid coordinates. Basically transform the degrees, minutes and seconds from the ellipsoid to meters or feet on the map projection. Good thing is that they are officially GPS transformations, but the bad news is that 
I saw some uh, softwares using dated or wrong conversion files. If you go to, to the QGIS or even to your uh, GPS coordinate system, you will see loads of transformation uh, from the OSGB, which is the UK national grid, and you will understand what can go wrong if you don't know what to look for. How can you mitigate this error? Make sure that you're using the right coordinate system and the right conversion file for your drone, your GPS receiver and your GPS base. Make sure that you have the right configuration also for your uh, VRS provider. Survey extra checkpoints in your national grid system and check them against the same points after you process the orthophoto, the DM or the DTM. If you want to see what uh, inexpensive coordinate conversion software I use, you may want to watch this video.